Hello again and welcome back. Yaje here. Today is a farm to table. We're going to harvest, process and cook the fluted pumpkin. Quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Thank you very much. The fluted pumpkin is known in Cameroon as Okongobong and in some parts of Nigeria as Ugu. It is a very important vegetable and as with many vegetables, it is rich in vitamins, antioxidants. The Ugu is rich in minerals such as iron and iron is important in fighting anemia. After selectively harvesting the leaves, we are going to wash the leaves maybe two to three times to remove any sand, any soil or bugs. And then we're going to cut the leaves up into thin slices. The next step will be to blanch the cut up okogobong leaves. Blanching just means that you quickly cook the leaves or the vegetables and then quickly cool it down as well. I will be using kangwa, which is limestone, and the reason for using that dissolved kangwa is to maintain the green color of your vegetables and also to help tenderize the vegetables. If you're using kangwa, be sure to dissolve it and use only the solution. That way you prevent sand from being in your vegetables. If you don't have access to kangwa, which by the way, you can find in local African stores, you can replace with baking soda. But if you use baking soda, be sure to watch the cooking time because it does the tenderizing job rather very effectively. So you might end up with something really mushy. I dipped the veggies maybe two to three minutes and then drained and I'm cooling it down in icy water. If you don't have icy water, regular cold water is fine. The purpose is just to quickly cool down the vegetables to stop the cooking process. So here are the rest of the ingredients. Of course, the blanched okongobong, some crayfish, some egusi, which are melon seeds, ground egusi, aromatics, ginger and garlic, and then onion, sliced onion, seasoning cubes, optional. And then I'm gonna use salt and pepper, some oil, and this is the protein mix, which is just cooked beef and smoked fish. They say better soup na money kukam. So use as much protein as you can. It will only increase the flavor. So now I'm going to add some of the stock from that cooked beef and smoked fish to my egusi to make a paste. If you don't have enough stock, you can always use warm water. By the way, that stock liquid was warm. It makes the egusi dissolve better and dissolve faster. The method that I'm using here to cook the okongobong is the same method that you would use to cook ndole. Um, this was shared with me by my friend Anna. Thank you, sister Anna. So yes, I'm using a big pot there. Heat up uh, some oil and then I'm going to fry the onions and I'm seasoning the onions now with some salt and infusing it with some peppers. By the way, the peppers are from the garden as well. At this point, I will add the egusi paste and fry. I hear that it gives it a different flavor when you do it this way. Add the paste and fry the egusi for a little bit and you have to continue stirring because the paste tends to want to stick to the bottom of the pot. We're going to let that egusi paste, quote unquote, fry for a little bit there. And then now I'm coming in with my ginger seasoning mix. In that ginger seasoning mix, I have garlic, I have onions, and then I have anise seeds as well. So those are my aromatics you can customize to suit your taste. You would notice that I keep stirring constantly again. That's because that egusi just wants to stick at the bottom of your pot. So now I'm adding the rest of my stock mix and then I'm going to cover the pot, turn it down on low and cook that egusi mix for maybe 15 to 20 minutes until it is done. This point, I'm going to adjust the seasoning, adding some of that seasoning cube or maggi cubes. And then I'm going to come in with the powdered shrimp or janga. The powdered shrimp adds smokiness, it adds flavor, it adds protein. 
there is really no greens cooked in Cameroon. No, I'm kidding. But very few greens that are cooked in Cameroon without the use of this crayfish or this njanga. It is a very important ingredient in, in Cameroon cooking. Okay, so now I'm adding my blanched okongobong into the mix there. And how much you add is a matter of personal preference. But we're going for a balance of greens and paste. We don't want too much greens because your soup as we call it soup by the way is anything that we used to eat fufu with in africa is going to be too green you know maybe healthier if you add very little vegetables then you get you know you get a goosey soup instead of of the okogobong soup that i'm making so you want that healthy balance at this point i'm coming in with my meats that is um cow meat with a little skin on or pomo that smoked barracuda the more the better i'm kidding the more the more they're not better i don't know it's a matter of personal preference but um yeah so add your meats at this point and then stir and adjust seasoning again that's all we do with african cooking you keep tasting and adjusting until it is just right a tribe if you're still here with me please give this video a thumbs up please it is important and then drop me a comment to let me know if this is how you would cook your okong obong this last step of the cooking process is optional but recommended i'm going to saute the rest of the onions the ones that i sliced up um, in a little oil and this is used for garnishing so it is optional but i have learned that when a recipe says optional include it the first time and then decide if you like it or not and then you can take it out so we're going to quickly fry the onions and when it is just brown we take it out and add it to the top and your okorobon soup is ready i'm just adding back some of the peppers that i cooked at the beginning yeah and our okorobon is ready it's ready this can be eaten with pounded yam boiled yam boiled plantains gary the options are endless we had ours with some pounded yam thank you so much for watching and please do not go without subscribing if you have not yet done so farm to table to me means that what was once a seed in my garden is now dinner on my plate and that is the whole reason why we grow a garden so that we can grow our own food to nourish our bodies and along the way nourish so much more than just the body this particular okorobon was cultivated to feed me yaje and so the calories are going to go to my soul i'm just kidding thank you again grow a garden grow health bye